Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode of the Directed IRA podcast with Mark Kohler and Matt Sorensen. I would be the Mark in that equation. and I would be the Matt. Yep. There we go. <laughs> Just and uh, like thanks. I should have jumped in there, I guess. I yeah, no, no, you, that was your cue. You know, okay. we don't, we're not professional enough to have cue cards. So I no. you got to just feel it. So uh, if you're new to the show, thank you for being here. This is the open forum episode. We do it every two or three times. Boy, that sounded really radio ish. The open, open forum show. Uh, we, yeah, we, every two or three shows, we <laughs> yeah, just Sunday, answer. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> We just answer your questions from around the country. We have thousands of clients self-directing their IRAs, their 401ks, their health savings accounts, their Coverdells, and it can get a little complicated. A lot of practical questions that many uh, folks just love the open forum Q&A because they're like, oh, I never thought of that question. So it's kind of nice to be a part of that community. We're here today just trying to... yeah. Hit some hit some base hits. Yeah, just just trying to help you set your IRA free. That's all we Ooh, that's all we yeah. want you to do. Set your IRA. Let it free. let it live, baby. Um, well, uh, if you're new to self directing, just, just go back to episode one. Just if you're like, man, this is my first little cut at this, and wow, that was complex. I mean, these are people's questions that are out there self directing, trying to build their retirement. Sometimes they're complex. Sometimes they're more easy kind of layups. Um, we're gonna hit both sides of those today. Um, but just know we've got a ton of content, 30 or 40 episodes already in the hopper. Go back to episode one and start there. And really the first 10 are kind of like the 10 you should start with and know, and then just bounce around to what interests you. So, I love it. Okay. And I've got a deep thought. I'm going to start it oh, off with this deep, deep thought. thought. Then Matt's yeah. going to throw out our questions. He's going to be our MC for today. So you'd okay, be looking so you for the- you want to give your deep thought? Yeah. Do you well, remember you're looking deep for thoughts? Deep thoughts by Jack Candy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoever- <laughs> Whoever that is, but um, <laughs> I missed the reference. Who's that? You don't remember that? Oh, Saturday Night Live, they did this Deep Thoughts oh, by okay. Jack Handy. Yep, yep, yep. I remember that. <laughs> okay. So while you're looking for that first question, and folks, if you'd like to enter. Uh, I'm going to give a deep thought too after you. Are you? So okay. You, you your deep thought. Now, gonna... here, here's a couple. Let's get some housekeeping out of the way. If you self-direct and any of your family members want to learn how to better control their retirement account, please share this podcast. Give us a five star. It helps other people find it. We've got the best selling books on this topic in the country. We've been doing this for 20 years. We're both lawyers, tax attorneys. We've got a trust company, directedira.com and our law firm. We're here for you. Next, we're having some workshops this fall. We're doing a live summit. It's our, we do every six months. This one this yeah. fall. Is in Phoenix, date, Matt? Yep, Scottsdale, but Phoenix metro area, close enough, Scottsdale, October 22nd, 23rd. It's okay. a Friday afternoon golf tournament, evening reception, networking, Saturday, full blast, multiple sessions at a time, self-directing, educational, heck of a good time. Yep, and if that date doesn't work for you and or you've already been to the summit and you want to try something new, Two weeks before that, on October 1st, we're going to be in Dallas for the Masters evening. And this is where we're not actually implying that Matt and I are the Masters. This is 50, uh, limited to 50 people only that have, are currently self-directing. There will be people in the room with 20, 30 plus million IRAs. And everybody's going to be networking, sharing ideas. Dinner is provided. It's a three-hour evening with just Matt and I talking high-end strategies. Well worth a little flight to Dallas, spend an evening, make it a tax-deductible mm -hmm. trip. That's on October 1st. Meanwhile, I'm doing my workshops around the country that are more business in scope, um, which will always include a self-directed IRA aspect. Those are in Chicago, Orange County, and Honolulu, one day in Dallas on October 2nd, get to our websites. You can find out more about them and sign up. They are limited in seating each one. My workshops are at hundred people. The summit's at 50. And I, what's the limit on the IRA summit? Did you say 250? Think, yeah, we're about 200, 200. Uh, is about the limit there. So and we sold out, we've sold out Every most time. years. So, yeah. so get on it. Yeah, very affordable where these aren't, yep. you know, $5,000, you know, mastermind weekends. These are several, two to $300, maybe four or five at most yep. on some of these um, for some tax deductible, great time. All right. 
So that's housekeeping. And here's my deep okay. thought. <laughs> okay. Deep thought. All right, go on. I had a life coach, famous life coach say, self-direct your thoughts like you self-direct your IRA. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> so thought management is really at the core of life coaching and choosing what thoughts you're going to think about every day and making sure you're choosing thoughts that create the right feelings and actions in your life and which ultimately create the right results and controlling your thoughts no matter what crappy circumstance you might be in. So that's the kind of the same story with your IRA, your 401k, self-direct it. You get to choose what your IRA invests in. You get to choose what your brain spends its time thinking about. You're in control. Very empowering. Yeah. That's what I love about self-directing is you are the, have the freedom to do what you want. Don't feel like you're in a box of the, you got to just pick these options on the menu, you know, go off menu, you know, yeah, yeah. you're like, Hey, I want some real estate, but I don't want it in a big REIT with a bunch of other people with huge fees and everything. Can you just hold the huge fees and other crappy oversell of the, if you sold all the properties, the REIT wouldn't even be worth what it is. Can I just buy a property directly with my IRA? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do that, but you need a self-directed IRA. Okay. Right. So right. that was a deep thought brought to you by a famous deep life thought. coach, PC. I'll just give a shout out to PC. I'll leave it at that. Okay. 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 All right, yeah. Matt, what's your deep yeah, I'm going to give my deep thought. Okay. Now this is from this, my deep thoughts from Jack Candy. Okay. okay. It's a deep thought. For those of you who remember SNL and deep thoughts, I'm going to try to do the voice. Okay. If you saw two guys named Hambone and Flippy, which one do you think liked dolphins the most? I'd say Flippy, wouldn't you? You'd be wrong though. It's Hambone. <laughs> I don't know why. I think that's so funny. But I think my deep thought was a little more <laughs> mean. So I think it was, who was it on SNL that read these? I think it was Daryl Hammond. I can't remember, but they were hilarious. Oh my gosh. They were hilarious. So deep that's thoughts funny. by Jack Candy. All right. Okay. Well, First let's get into your questions. Okay. Yes. We'll stop messing around here. Okay. Um, and I'm remember, sit back, if you just relax. Okay. Yeah. Whenever, get me. All right. Okay. Hit me. Um, Best shot. All right. Do it. Okay. All right. I'm just giving some instruction here. Hold on. Okay. You're on deck. Okay. Oh, so, well, you're on deck. You're not up yet. You're on deck. Okay. okay. Practice. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, I'm just getting ready. <laughs> so, um, if you ever want to ask a question, these are where those are coming from. Go to directedira.com slash podcast. There's a big button that says submit a question and you can type in your question there. You can see previous ones others have asked and we're just going to hit them on the show here today. So we'll be running through uh, those that have been asked. I do have some email ones that we do get because that's the old school way we used to do it. So I got some here in the email that we'll be asking too. All right. Let's start out with some cool Solo K Roth IRA questions. These questions are from Mark. He had a series of questions that are really good that teach some concepts that might seem a little counterintuitive about the solo K okay, that's Roth that I think it's important to people know because they can mess it up because it's a little counterintuitive. All right. So here's what he said. Um, he's been basically watching some of our educational stuff, our classes, um, and he talked about um, he wants to buy real estate with his solo Roth 401k account, and he wants to get a non-recourse loan to buy it. His question is, does it incur any UDFI or UBIT tax? Okay, now the answer is there's no UDFI on solo Ks buying leveraged real estate. Let me say that again. There's no UDFI, UDFI tax on solo 401ks buying leveraged real estate. Can I have UDFI in a solo K? Yes, you can. But you won't have it when you buy leveraged real estate. So I'll have clients say, man, I want to loan someone money with my solo K but I'm going to have someone loan me money at 8% and then I'm going to loan that money out at 12% to someone else. I'm going to make the spread in the middle of 14% for my solo K. Can I do that? Yeah, you can do it. Um, but you're going to have UDFI, but I thought solo Ks don't have UDFI, Matt. They don't on leveraged real estate purchases. Mm. That's it. That's the only way you get around UDFI is that little narrow category. Okay. Love now it. here's another misconception on solo Ks. Hey, Matt, I want to flip some properties. I'm going to use a solo K because I don't pay you bit. Yeah, they do. No, I, th I thought like if you do real estate with a solo K, you don't pay UBIT. I want to flip like 10 properties. No, you still have UBIT. Again, the only difference on solo Ks in, this, in, in the taxes is UDFI on leveraged real estate. Now, if you don't know what that is, we got a prior podcast on taxes that can apply to retirement accounts. There's a tax called UDFI. 
that applies when you leverage an IRA, you get a loan with an IRA to buy a bigger asset. You didn't use all retirement plan dollars, you had to bring in some debt. There's a little tax that can apply in that scenario to IRAs. So that's question number one for from Mark. Okay. Now question number two, I'm sending your way. Okay. Okay. He says, um, I also want to ver verify my understanding that a solo 401k Roth does have RMDs. Well, he asked at age 70 and a half, it's now 72. All right, you want to cover RMDs or you yes. want me to? No, I okay. can do it. And correct me if I'm wrong. My uh, understanding is that if you have a 401k, we're going to assume you're currently employed. See, the only reason you'd have a 401k per se, folks, is if you're actively employed somewhere because you have to have a business that sponsors the 401k. So when a solo 401k, you've got a small business, you adopt a solo 401k. By the way, we do these very, very affordably, uh, full service and a kind of a doc service only. Call us if you're interested. So you can set up this solo 401k, be the trustee and self-direct it all day long, but you have to have a business sponsoring it. Well, what's a 401k for? Employees. So you're an employee of the company, you have a 401k. As long as you're employed and you have this 401k, no RMDs are required. Now, why I make that distinction rather than just saying there's no RMDs in a 401k is because that's not really true. It's like you could be left employment and have a 401k, but you don't have a job. You just have this old 401k that's just sitting there. Matt, wouldn't you have to start taking RMDs out of that because you're no longer yeah. employed? Isn't that the case? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. So, and there's a big misconception because a lot of people think, but Mark, it's a Roth 401k. You don't take RMDs from Roths. Yeah. Roth IRAs have no RMD. Roth 401ks are subject to RMD. Even when you hit 72, the only exception being what Mark mentioned there is you're still employed. The still employed thing is an exception for 401ks. So even if you with other solo case, if you're still employed at 72, you're still getting a W-2 from that company that has that 401k. You're going to be okay avoiding RMD and you're going to claim that you're exempt because you're still employed, even though you're 74 years old now, still working, running your small business. I love it. Yeah. And, um, and, and some of you may say, well, how much do I have to pay myself? Theoretically, a dollar. I mean- you might pay yourself. Yeah, you're not to be employed. You have yeah. to be employed, and I and I don't know if you got to meet the hourly rule of the 19 hours a week or not. But but what I say is just you're gonna need a W two. Yeah, that's sure. W two. Say it there. You're, you're working. Yeah. Um. I, and RMD, by the way, is this money you have to take out of your account when you reach 72 for traditional IRAs. Roth IRAs are exempt from RMD, but traditional IRAs. Um, also, all 401ks, your Roth accounts, your traditional accounts. But remember in the 401ks, like Mark mentioned, if you're still working and employed, even when you hit 72, um, you can be exempt from RMD. Okay. All right. So Mark asked a follow-up question. He says, um, and then he talks about how Roth IRAs do not have RMDs. Okay, that's that's correct. He says, um, I, I want to know if it's possible to transfer funds or assets from a solo, a Roth solo 401k to a Roth IRA and what fees and hurdles may be encountered. Okay. okay. Now okay. this is another tricky question. That's why I'm like, Mark asks a few tricky questions. If you, if you, if you just apply the traditional understanding and logic, you're going to screw these up. So yeah, that's why I'm yeah. hitting Mark's questions. So sorry if these seem technical, we're just diving right in here today. Okay. Roth 401k accounts can be rolled over to Roth IRAs. So let's say you're 72. And we get this all the time and you're like, crap, I got to start taking RMD. I've got a rental in my Roth solo K, but I don't want to start taking, taking RMD yet. I'm not working anymore. I want to just close the solo K down. Can I roll that property over and put it into the Roth IRA? Yes. Okay. You do. It's called an in-kind rollover or transfer from the solo K over to the Roth IRA. Now your Roth IRA owns it. The Roth IRA has no RMD. So if you have any assets, whether it's a self-directed asset like real estate or a private stock or crypto or whatever, and you're hitting 72 and it's in a Roth 401k where you're like, crap, I don't want to have to take RMD, roll it out. You can get over to the Roth IRA by doing an in-kind transfer of that asset. Now, you cannot go the other way. You cannot move assets in a Roth IRA over to a Roth solo 401k. A lot of clients 
think that they can do that, it's a one-way street, only 401k to Roth IRA, Roth 401k to Roth IRA. Now, if I may, uh, Matt, are we done with Mark's questions at this point? Yep. Okay. Mark got all of your money's worth. By the I'm, way, that I'm, I'm in a one hour consult, Mark. You're welcome. You bet. I'm looking at <laughs> questions here on my, yeah, I'm looking at questions here on my phone. And I'm also feeling kind of prompted to talk about for just a moment, a question I received yesterday from a long-term client of ours, Michael, he knows who he is. He listens a regular listener of our podcast. Um, he asked a question kind of similar in this vein of what Mark's doing in a sense, you know, business, what are my limitations type question. So Michael yesterday on a phone call said, Hey, my partner, I have this business that's really doing well, better than we expected. Can I transfer that business into my Roth IRA? I just heard about Peter Thiel and how he had his IRA <laughs> and PayPal or Facebook. I said, no, you cannot do that. It'd be prohibited. You already own that business and it's already an ongoing concern. And he goes, but Mark, you talk about what's called opportunity shifting. Can't I shift that opportunity into my Roth and let my Roth get all the upside when it goes up in value even further? And here's the difference. I said, yes, I want you to opportunity shift undeveloped ongoing concerns, not a business that's already making money and has value. So if you have an idea and you're like, oh my gosh, this could make a lot of money and I don't have to provide sweat equity. I could bring on a partner that could do the heavy lifting. We could hire a person to do the work. Yes, we might have to deal with UBIT tax or not, I don't know. But if you have an opportunity that isn't an ongoing concern yet, let's let your Roth do it. That's what Peter Thiel did. Let us Roth do it. Yeah. But if you have an ongoing concern now or even a rental property that you own now, it ain't going in your retirement account. Sorry, folks. Tangent off of that is I get a lot of people that are like, but Matt, I want to start this new business, but I want to own it 100% and work in it like Peter Till did. Or maybe I've got two partners and we're 50-50 and I want my Roth IRA to own 50%, my partner's Roth IRA will own their 50%, and then we're going to work in it and run this new startup. Okay. You can't do that either, probably. I mean, it's possible. There's some technical rules there. But Peter Till had like a ton of partners. They had investors. You think that if you, everybody's heard of the PayPal mafia and Elon Musk and Max Levchin and all these other, other famous people that have since started multiple other successful companies since PayPal. Uh, Was it Reed Hastings? I mean, like that that little group of people. They were all co-founders. All right, so they nobody was over fifty percent. They were all minority partners. It was it was more easy to execute that strategy um, than it is. Hey, it's just me doing this or me and one partner. The the, the rules at 50% or greater are complicated, let's just say that. So so that's the um that's the restraint there. But um all right, let me go to a question from Don. Um he says, "Hey guys, got another question for you. I've heard many times that I can partner with my retirement account. Since I'm a partner in the property personally, Am I able to be a guarantor on a loan to buy the property? Does the does the answer change based on whether there's ownership 90, 10, 50, 50, um, and so forth? All right. Now, it's true. You can partner to buy real estate with your IRA. So let's say you had a property for 100,000 you were going to buy. You put in 50,000 from your IRA and you personally put in 50,000. You go buy the property for 100 grand. Well, let's say it's actually a 300,000 property, but you put 100,000 down between your IRA and you personally. Um, you have to get a non-recourse loan. You cannot guarantee it. I know you're in there personally, but you're in there personally for the dollars you put in. And so if you still go in and guarantee that loan, your IRA is also in the deal. It's effectively guaranteeing debt that benefits your IRA. That's going to cause an extension of credit prohibited transaction. So avoid that. And just as a general tip for everyone else who may not be familiar, if you're buying an asset with a loan, real estate being the most common one, that loan must be non-recourse. You cannot guarantee the loan. It's not in your personal name. It's the IRA getting it or your IRA LLC. And um, it's not round off your credit. The lender is going to analyze the property and the rental income, and they're going to make you put 30 to 40% down. We've got other episodes and shows on that, on non-recourse loans resources at directedira.com of five different banks that do non-recourse loans to IRAs or IRA LCs or solo Ks buying rental real estate. 
So um, lots of other resources there, Don. Okay. Awesome. I love it. Great right. answer. Man, okay. just watching Matt up at the plate hitting these little home runs and doubles and triples. It's exciting. Okay. All right. This one's for you. Okay. This one's uh, it's not a fastball, but it's a... Uh, it's at least 80 miles an hour. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. I'm ready. It's a wimpy one. Bring it. All right. Bring it. Okay. This is from Tom. This is I mark him out. This is my IRA is invested in a syndication that is building a complex of townhomes. We really like them and want to purchase one for ourselves temporarily as a residence and then as a rental. Is it a prohibited transaction to purchase the townhomes in this complex from the syndication that our IRA is one investor in? Oof. Okay, if we were on a consultation, this is Tom, right? Yep, Tom. The first question I would ask Tom is, there, there, I have several. The first question I was going to ask is, how much does your IRA own in the syndication? Now, when he says the word syndication, the typical response I'm going to get is somewhere be typically between 1%, 2 or 3%. Yeah, a, he's going to be below 10 probably. <laughs> yeah, for those that don't know a syndication, it's like a a big hedge fund uh, it's a big conglomerate whatever and they it's got a little a investment fund. fund yeah it's an yeah. llc that maybe has 100 people in it yeah. yeah so if you invest in a syndication your ira's ownership percentage is probably going to be quite small number two i was asking him do you have any other ownership in the syndication yourself or with family members or other retirement accounts and if he says no it's just our ira it owns three percent Okay, so far so good. And then I would ask, do you work for this little project? I mean, are you on salary? Are you a principal? Did you help build the syndication? Are you involved as a founder? And he goes, nope, I just, we just found out about it and we love the project. They're gonna build a hundred townhomes. We just decided we might wanna buy one personally and live in it or make it a rental. Okay, to me, he answered my three golden questions correctly. I would say, yep. go for it. Would you agree? Yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, if I may, Matt, if he said, yeah. oh, well, my IRA or a combination of my own family members or other IRAs, we own close to 40 to 50%, I'd go, hmm, we're in the shades yeah. of gray now. And <laughs> well, that shades of gray, but yeah. it's a little too dark. For Don't me. read the book. That's not going to help you on this question. 50 yeah. shades of gray is, you know. <laughs> Your answer is not in there, yeah. at least on this question. Yeah, we're not saying it's a bad book. We're just saying it's not going to help you with this question. <laughs> Shades of gray. Now, and what we've said is you may go, well, what, hasn't the IRS said what the percentage is where it's no good? Nope. It's a very subjective analysis of a lot of facts and figures that involve control and ownership and blah, blah, blah. So it kind of gets grayer and grayer as you get close to 50%. And it's really white and clear around that 3%, 5% in a syndication. Yeah, okay. yeah you, I always tell clients when you're below 10%, it's, you know, the cases out there or the private letter rulings people have asked the IRS, it's usually not prohibited unless you're doing something weird. Um, if you're just buying the town home at the price that the developers sell them to everyone else, you're going to be fine. Um, and so, but when you're in that 11 to 49%, it is these 39 shades of gray there of, we don't know. It depends on a lot of other factors. And frankly, the IRS agent and the tax court judge you might get on that case. And then of course, 50% or more, we know it's going to be prohibited because it's going to be just like you're transacting with your own IRA. Yeah. Now. The third question I asked, was he in control, a manager on salary, a founder? That could cause problems. Um, you yeah. may say, well, I only own 3%. Yeah, but I'll go, yeah, but you're the freaking founder. You're on salary. You're getting, you may be involved in property management and that could cause a problem. So, but if you answer those three questions in the, uh, um, in the negative, none of those were affirmative then you would get your self-directed card and you'd be allowed to travel on a cruise ship or around the country with a so-called vaccinated self-directed card. You'd be good to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> bring, it to yeah, you know, bring in a little current okay, events there. Yeah. Little current events. Okay. okay. Yeah, if you're listening to this podcast three years later, yeah. that'll be, that's going to be a go throwback. Watch Contagion. Right we, we're be living throwback. Contagion. Yeah, we don't get a wristband; we get a card hmm. with a yeah, little, little CDC card. logo up in the corner. Yeah, should we give a little legal tip here? 
if you forge a vaccination card, the FBI has come out now and been very clear that if you forge a vaccination card, it is the forgery or manip manipulation of a government, government doc document. document. And yeah. you may say the vaccination card is a government document because yes, of the CDC logo up in the right hand corner. So mm -hmm. even though it's a crappy piece of paper and some receptionist at your doctor signed it for you when you got it and you thought, this is it? There's no barcode, yeah. there's no QR code? What the hell? I could have just yeah. written one out myself. Yes, but if you get caught, yeah. it is up to $5,000 in penalty or a five-year prison sentence, yeah. for, and it's a federal crime. It's like, oh, is this my your my vaccine card? No, that's my recipe for cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, let me give you the other one. <laughs> oh, this is oh, here's the vaccine yeah. card. <laughs> Let's see, one cup sugar, half cup uh, chocolate chips. Oh no, that's the wrong one. <laughs> All right, uh, here's a question from Lenny. Um, I think you'll like this one, Mark. He says, "Hello, Mark and Matt. I have a question for you. I just started my solo 401k and self-directed IRAs." And I have some rentals that are in an LLC that also has my kids Roth IRAs as partners in it. My question, question is, how should I grow my retirement account to make it easy for my kids to inherit my account? My next question is, how will my retirement account be treated when my kids inherit it? That they are the partners in this LLC. Will they be prohibited? And how will they handle the membership interest of their inherited IRA? Ooh, love this question, Lenny. Ooh, now can first I con all, comment first on Lenny? Yeah. I haven't heard anybody with the name of Lenny since probably Laverne and Shirley. Um, those were the yeah. days. Oh, Corey, <laughs> you know, Laverne and Shirley, yeah. <gasps> Corey, who's a millennial. I thought Corey would be like, who the freak is Laverne and Shirley? Laverne and Shirley was a wonderful show that played for a half hour, either before or after happy days in the afternoon mm -hmm. after I got home from school. Okay. And I love Laverne and Shirley. Okay, I'm going to give you a little quiz, Matt. Was what was Laverne's? Okay, here's the... Here's the fail. No, you can do it. You can do it. Everybody out there, if we were on a live podcast, people would answer this immediately to win a book. What was Laverne's favorite drink in the show Laverne and Shirley? Hmm. A Shirley Temple. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Lenny and Squiggy? Was it Squiggy, Corey? Lord, no. Lenny and Squiggly... Lenny... And Squiggy, I'm, no, it's something else. We're the um, neighbors, the neighbors of Laverne and Shirley. This is like pre-friends, kind of like friends. <laughs> These two girls, Laverne and Shirley, live together. And Lenny uh, and Squiggy, I think, you got to Google podcasting. that. Okay, this favorite drink. Corey, do you know what it was? Pepsi and milk. Okay. Pepsi Mixed milk. or like two Mixed. separate drinks? No, she'd mix them together. <laughs> That's weird. Um, <laughs> I didn't care to know that, but that's, that's weird. <laughs> well, you know, um, I, I okay, think it's I'm kind of fun trivia. That. I'll give you some more trivia about Laverne and Shirley in just a moment. I, Pepsi. Okay. Well, I said Pepsi and I milk. Think, and, she I called it a one, milk and Pepsi. I, it's Pepsi and milk. Uh, I think one per podcast is, is enough. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, ouch. Okay. All right. So I, Lenny... Yeah. Get back to Lenny's I mean, question. You're distracting the listeners. Go ahead. Okay. My contractor's name, by the way, is Lenny. Really? You know. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. I talked to him yesterday, actually. I, um, so Squiggy. Okay. Squiggy. Do you have any interest in Lenny's question? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to talk about Laverne and Shirley. His question was. He's like, nope, but uh, yeah, all so right, Lenny. Um, just have a Pepsi and milk, and <laughs> it's called a milk and Pepsi. Oh, a milk Sorry. and Pepsi. And you got to call it the right thing, milk and Pepsi. Yeah. If you haven't All tried right. it, everybody do it tonight in honor of Laverne and Shirley. I'll give you one other tidbit know. after you answer okay. Lenny's question. You get, you okay. answer it. All right, yeah, I'll answer Lenny's question. You're definitely in a different world right now. Okay, okay. Lenny, um, love what you're doing. First of all, um, I hope your kids appreciate it because you know, I always wish my parents would give me a Roth IRA and throw me in an LLC that bought real estate and then be like, ah, oh, how do we get your, how can you get my account when I pass away? I mean, that's just, Ooh. you know. Ooh, and I have a good tip good here. I have a good okay. tip here. Okay, you go. Okay. Keep going. I hope it doesn't have to do with Laverne and Shirley, but. No. Um, or Pepsi and milk, either way. Okay. All right. um, 
Okay, so what happens when you pass away, your kids will inherit your account if they're the beneficiaries on your beneficiary designation form. So let's say you have two kids and you want them to inherit your account, you would list them each as 50% beneficiaries on your solo 401k, because that's what you got in the deal on your side. Or if your IRAs are in there on your, on your IRA, it doesn't matter. Now, since they're already all in an LLC, what's gonna happen is you pass away, let's say that your solo K owns 40% of the LLC. Um, and then uh, your kids are gonna get inherited IRAs from the 401k, they can get inherited IRAs, and these could be traditional or Roth, depending on what your solo 401k was. You didn't say, but it could go either way. And, but they're gonna get inherited IRAs. Now they would each get an inherited IRA that owns 20%. If you own 40% total in your solo K and each kid got 50%, they're gonna each get their own inherited IRA account and it's gonna own 20%. Their existing Roth IRAs that may own the other 60% or whatever it may be, stays at whatever it owns and the LLC keeps on going. You don't need to do anything. Your solo K kind of goes away and dies and these inherited IRAs come in and take over that ownership percentage, no tax, nothing. Now remember on these inherited IRAs, there's gonna be a 10 year window of when you're gonna to need to close these out. So inherited IRAs now, you have a 10 year window from when you inherit it to when you're gonna to need to distribute the funds. The nice thing about inherited IRAs now is that you don't have to take RMD at all until 10 years you then take a distribution. It used to be you could take a, um, you could stretch out the IRA over the lifetime of the person that inherited it, be able to take RMD every year. Now though, you just get a 10 year window to take it out, um, but there's no RMD at all. So it's okay. will be a good way for them to inherit those accounts. Um, you don't have to change the LLC. LLC can still own the property. They're gonna get a 10 year window to just keep that operation going. Okay. All right. Well, I've got another, I've got a, um, a tip here on this very topic from a phone call yesterday. Right. You may be like, man, you had a lot of phone calls yesterday. Really only had three. I think I had three calls yesterday <laughs> amongst my craziness of working through my pile on my desk. Um, and this is from Sherry. She is older and I know she appreciates Laverne and Shirley. So a little shout out to her. She has 14 grandkids. All right. And she asked this very question. She said, well, Mark, I'm, she's in her 80s. She goes, I'm too old for a Roth. And I go, no, you're not. I go, let me quote the infamous Dave Ramsey. If you're still breathing, you can still be saving. <laughs> and <laughs> so um, I love that point. And I, she goes, well, what would I do? And I said, if you want to save and maybe leave a legacy with your kids, why don't you set up 14 Roth accounts? And you could put seven grand in this year, seven, I mean, seven grand next year. So that's 500 each this year, 500 each next year. You could have $14,000 in 14 different Roths. And each grandkid is a beneficiary of that Roth. And they have this 10 year amazing window to use it after you're gone but you can leave a legacy and teach them about investing or whatever you're into. And I'll leave it at that. Sherry and I had a great conversation about it. And so this is right along with Lenny's point. You know, the inherited IRAs are quite amazing. An inherited Roth is like the creme de la creme. And for those of you that are older and you're thinking, I could do that. I could set up a Roth and just name what that Roth for each kid or grandchild or great grandchild. Lots of fun. Do you mm -hmm. like that? Can you live with it? I like that. Okay. I like that. Well, those kids are going to have to have some earned income, but yeah. <laughs> Hold it. She has earned income. She's setting up a Roth and making oh, for, them the beneficiaries to inherit. to inherit. Oh, I missed that part of the front end. Do you That's, like that better? Uh, and she, like guess better. what? She does have earned income. Mm -hmm. So she could set up 14 Roths. Now, the only drawback in all this, if I was had a quiz, if I had- 500 I'd, bucks a piece, I guess. 500 bucks a kid times Got two it. over the next two years. We could do up to 7,000 because she's over 50. Cool. Yeah. And I was like, when she told me 14 grandkids, I was like, that's perfect. So, you know, 14 divided by seven, you know, and I got, I'm ready to go or sorry, seven grand by 14 is 500 mm -hmm. a year. Okay. But anyway, um, the drawback would be if I was to quiz a room and I go, what would the drawback be is you've got some admin costs. I mean, yeah. you're going to set up 14 Roths 
And you have to say, right. what am I going to invest it in? Where am I going to set them up? And what am I going to put in them? So you've got yeah. to think through that and make sure that it's economic. But if you're like, heck, I don't care about the administration costs per se. What I'm trying to do is leave a legacy. I'm trying to leave a concept. Yeah. I mean, I would only do the 14 accounts if you're going to have them involved with you right now and you kind of want them to learn and they can do their own thing with their own account, make their own investments with you. If you're just going to do it anyways, I just do it in one and list 14 beneficiaries. You could do that. And then when you do pass away, those that one account will be split into 14, one for each of them. Ooh, that's a good idea too, Matt. Yeah. Man, good heads. Two yeah. minds are better than one. That's good. Yeah. Okay, let's see if you can really pass the test. All right. Okay. Now, if Sherry was listening, she, she'll listen. She's a listener to the show. I know okay. she could get this. Okay, here's your question, Matt. What does Laverne and Shirley, <laughs> the movie Big, and the movie League of Their Own have in common? Tom Hanks? No, Tom Hanks was not in Laverne and Shirley. He was not even born yet, probably. No, no he was born, probably. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't was, know. I you know don't know? nothing of Laverne and Shirley. Okay. I don't I don't know that show. I, I You reference it, and I've obviously heard it before. I know Happy Days a little bit. Okay. But All you're right. not a Laverne and Shirley guy. Yeah. Now, um, Big, okay. yeah. that has Tom Hanks, right? Yeah. Or no, that's Matthew. Yeah. That, that's, no, it that's has Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks in both of them. And a league of their own. Yeah. I mean, I got two out of three. You got two out of three. Okay, here's the answer. Laverne in Laverne and Shirley was Penny Marshall. Beautiful woman. She really looked great for years of the day she died. She was a, after Laverne and Shirley, because she had such <laughs> good name recognition, she became okay. a director. She was the director <laughs> of Big and League of Their Own. Oh, who knew? Who knew? I didn't now, know that. Wow. Penny's daughter was a client of mine. Uh, oh. A few years ago, as we were doing some estate planning, I had a chance to talk to Penny Marshall at one point, and her daughter was in League of Their Own as well. Wow! Is a little Man, small, you're just full of full yeah. of fun facts today. Yeah, fun fact that was all related to facts. Lenny, all related to Lenny, who was on oh, the Vernon Man. Shirley. Is that good? Sorry, look at what you on Earth today, Lenny. Yeah, Man. yeah. So um, who, who's, okay, okay. I'll give you one other. I'll give you one other question in a minute. This is these are I old timer we're questions. I think okay. we're good. Yeah, okay. yeah we're good. Okay. All right. Well, I, that's actually all the questions I had to hit for today's episode. Oh. Uh, unless you have any other on the self-directed front, not a Laverne and Shirley trivia question. Those don't okay. count. That's another, I think you need to do a third podcast, Mark. I think you need a Laverne <laughs> and Shirley fan club podcast. Oh my gosh. I think you need an outlet, a different outlet okay. for these, for these fun facts. Okay. I've, well, I've got, I've got one more for you, but um, let me see. Self-directing. That's okay. That's okay. You are just, oh. man, you are not playful today. You know, I, 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 I'm really frustrated by that. Um, oh, okay. I did have one question. Sorry. Let me hit this one. This one, okay. this is, uh, this, this is from Luis. Okay. Uh, hopefully not a character in Laverne and Shirley. Um, he says, hi, Matt and Mark, instead of converting a regular IRA into a self-directed Roth IRA LLC, whew, okay, which would take going from a traditional IRA, I presume, to a self-directed IRA, converting to a Roth IRA, then setting up an LLC. All right, that's what you'd need to do. He said, can you instead have a loan against that certain amount? That way it wouldn't be taxable since it's a loan. Thank you very much for in advance for applying with all the different scenarios that you cover on your podcast. Okay, no. The short answer is no, Luis. So whenever you start thinking of ideas of, hey, I've got money in my retirement account, but I want to get it to use it personally, and it's like, I know I can't take a distribution because it would be taxed. Why don't I just loan myself the money? The IRS thought of that. In the IRAs, you cannot loan yourself money from your own IRA. That's prohibited. The IRS doesn't trust you with that. They think you're just getting around the distribution rules. Even if you pay interest on it, it ain't going to work in an IRA. Sorry, Luis, you don't have a choice. Um, the IRA is basically to invest for the long term. It's not used for you to pull money out personally, unless you just take the distributions and pay the tax and penalty. Now, you can take a loan from a 401k. So if you got a 401k at a day job, you can usually loan yourself half the balance, not to exceed $50,000. If you want to set up a solo 401k, you could set up a solo 401k. If you're self-employed with no other employees, you have some small business, side hustle, whatever, and you have no employees, you could set up your own solo 401k for yourself and your business because you're such a great employee. You could roll your traditional IRA dollars into the solo K, and then you take, can take a loan from the solo K 
to yourself personally, use it in the business, pay off high interest debt, go to Vegas, you know, whatever the heck you want with it. You got to pay it back to the solo K though over five years. So that's your options there, Luis. Can't do it out of the IRA. It is possible to loan yourself money though in a solo 401k if you qualify for the solo 401k. We got lots of episodes on the solo 401k and the podcast history here and on our sister podcast, Main Street Business Podcast. Man, great answer. Good job, Matt Sorensen. Thanks. Well, that, was well, a little sting move. that was a little sting move, you're all. Was that, was that sting? You've seen the movie know. Sting? The Sting? No. What? No. With Robert Who's Redford and Paul Newman? No, what? I don't, oh my gosh, I don't you're killing so. me. The Sting. You got to watch it. That's what I've they do with on their nose. They're all... Sneakers with Robert Redford? Isn't yeah, that sneakers? was good. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, all right. All right. This is still related to Lenny because <laughs> Lenny was a guest on Happy Days. Now, I know you know Happy Days. So for all you <laughs> new people, for all you young people, Corey, you might be able to get this one. What does Happy Days and Arrested Development have in common? Ron Howard. Oh, well, oh, fair enough. Sorry. Ron Howard is the narrator. Well, it definitely does. That might yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. That wasn't the answer does. to my question. Okay, that's one of them. Yes. It? Henry Winkler. Henry Winkler. Who is Henry yeah. Winkler in the Happy Fonz. Days? He's the Fonz. Yeah. And, and who's he in Arrested Development? What's the lawyer's name? I don't know. He's the he's hilarious, though, in Arrested well, Development. Yeah, he's hilarious. <laughs> he's, uh, I want to say is Bob Wawa or what? No, he's not. There's not Rob, Rob Abla. Rob, Rob Abla is, um, um, oh, who's the actor that plays that? But uh, anyways, but yeah. it's, a, isn't it Barry Zuckercorn or something oh, like that? Yeah. So we're going to have to figure it out. Ah, um, all right. Okay. But there you go. See, Lenny was a guest on Happy Days. Ron Howard later narrated Arrested Development, but Henry Winkler mm-hmm. was the lawyer in for George Bluth and did a terrible job, by the way. <laughs> Well, there's a, see, there's some trivia, all from Lenny. So yeah. we should dedicate this show to Lenny. Yeah, Lenny, thanks for your question today. Yeah. Barry Zuckercorn. Yeah, it's Barry Zuckercorn. That's the Oh, name. good job. Good job. Yeah. See, I couldn't have called that one. It's I was good, thinking of know? Bob Labwa, La Bob, whatever. Yeah, which was Scott Bayo. That's who was Rob Abla. Rob Abla was Scott Bayo. In Arrested? In Arrested Development, yeah. Okay, he was another attorney on the show. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. So. Well, see, folks, you get more than you bargain for. You get a little yeah. bit of edutainment. We, we we love to quote movies, but we really did TV shows today. I think it was yeah. TV shows. You know? We're dynamic like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Lenny, thanks for your question. You made the show what it is today. Without you, yeah, you it's, yeah. wouldn't have happened. Yeah. So. so, if anyone's still listening, thanks for joining the Directed IRA <laughs> podcast today. <laughs> For that one person still on the show, Lenny yeah. and Sherry. Uh... <laughs> you guys better give us a five-star review. We yeah. need it. Um, but no, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, we try to keep it light here. We know the topics can be complex and a little boring, but they're important. I mean, the number one asset you're going to have to retire on is going to be your retirement account. Social Security is not going to cut it. We want you to take control of your retirement, teach all the tools to do that, invest in the stuff you know. That's what we're all about. You can open up accounts, of course, at our company, Directed IRA. We're doing that every day, helping uh, clients across the country invest in what they want to. Uh, Set your IRA free. Go to directedira.com. And remember the workshops we got coming up that we mentioned at the front end. Um, Get over to our websites, markjkohler.com, directedira.com, mattsorensen.com. There'll be info there and sign up for our newsletters where you'll get updates on all those. And uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah, and... and IRA podcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And self-direct your thoughts and your IRA. Hmm. Where's a pen? Take control and of your thoughts it. and your retirement. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs>